hockey fans, are you ready to Brave the Wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey. Brave the Wild is available on thesportstuff.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist. It has uh, been a rough week for the Minnesota Wild. One and three with a few lackadaisical efforts and puck possession and stay out of the bleeping box. Yes, uh, that's why this episode is called Boxed In, because the Wild ever boxed into the penalty box quite a bit. And uh, we'll talk about that uh, on and off on this episode. Puck possession. It's like the Wild never have the puck, and they're, when they do, they're shorthanded. And when the Wild have the power play, they give up shorthanded goals. It's just been that kind of a season. And it's, yeah, it's been a tough, tough, tough go. Uh, Minnesota Wild host Edmonton last Saturday, the 16th of December. You come in expecting a decent game, and what do you get? Yeah, that's about right. Um, <laughs> a 3-2 to two loss. Okay, yeah, it was a close game. Very close. No, it really didn't feel close at all. Uh, Edmonton dominated the shots on goal. It was like 11-1 to one out uh, late in the first period. It was just awful. It was ugly. Uh, Matt Dumba, the only guy scoring goals all of a sudden. The much maligned Matt Dumba, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins opened the scoring in the second period after a nice, quiet first period. But, of course, <laughs> Stalock standing on his head. And that's kind of the trend. You could say it on every episode here. Uh, all the four games we're going to review, the three games we're going to preview. Hopefully, Stalock will not have to stand on his head as much. But, well, when the other team has the puck or is on the power play almost the whole bleeping game, and they get all the shots, and we're shorthanded this, that, this, that, shorthanded, or just... I don't know. I mean, uh, poor line changes, poor play from the bottom six. It's just kind of the way things are going. Uh, Cueva was in a drought that finally ended in Ottawa. Finally, I think I called that. I don't remember if it was Ottawa or Chicago. I think it was was Ottawa, if I remember correctly. That's pretty lucky, but I'm glad it finally happened. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins opened the scoring midway through the second period. Again, Edmonton dominating the shots on net. The Wild caught up a bit, and then... Things just kind of, again, continued to seesaw back and forth. It was a typical matinee game for the Minnesota Wild. It's like, it, it's always like this, and I should have known better. Edmonton looked a little bit more like they hoped they would be uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins with a shorthanded goal. Of course, Matt Dumba scoring a couple goals in this game, and we appreciate it very much. Uh, the Milan Lucic goal was the most frustrating of all. Uh, Dumba had just tied the game up three minutes earlier, three bleeping minutes earlier, and then there's a loose puck in front of... Uh, <clears throat> After the uh, the Edmonton Oilers put the puck on net, Connor McDavid, Drysdale, and all them, they get the puck on net. Of course, the top line for Edmonton, the puck is bouncing around, and uh, Dumba just kind of—it's like he was just kind of watching it. Everybody was kind of watching it. It was like a split second. Everybody was like, "Okay, who's going to get it?" And Lucic just gets to it first, fires it on net, and it goes past uh, Staylock. And that was kind of the—that was literally the turning point of the game. At that stage, Edmonton would go up three to one. And then Dumbo would make it 3-2 to two midway or late, late in the third period, but the Wild ultimately don't win the game. Just a lackluster, frustrating game from the get-go. You just kind of had a bad feeling with the way the Wild came out flat. Again, 11-1 to one shots on goal. And then just one thing after another, one frustrating part aspect of this game after another. Uh, you look at the penalties, though. I mean, it's sickening. Uh, the power plays. Edmonton Oilers had six power plays in the game. That's right. Uh, the penalty kill for the Wild, sure, they got the job done, but still, it's hard to score. I mean, it's nice to get a shorthanded once in a while, but they don't happen very often. The Wild luckily did have four power plays and did not finish on any of them, so that was kind of the case there. Uh, it's a miracle the Wild won up with 10 shots on net. They they finally got something going late in the later stages, the last five minutes or so of the first period, but of course could not finish on the returning Talbot. Uh, Talbot able to return. It was his first game back in a long time, and he looked much better than he was before the injury, because before the injury, Talbot was giving up three goals a game. Uh, Staylock is going to have some nasty numbers this week, but it's mostly because he was facing a firing squad all week, and I wouldn't doubt he'll, he's probably starting to get tired a little bit, especially after the back-to-back situation. Well, uh, head to Chicago on the 17th of December, on a Sunday, of course, Sunday evening, late, late evening, the Vikings had just beaten the the uh, Cincinnati Bengals in a blowout, a blowout, as they like to say in Canada. Uh, it was a pretty easy game for the Vikings, and then, okay, cool, hopefully the Wild can do something against Chicago, and they didn't, and it was just, I don't know, it was just same old, typical Minnesota-Chicago, 
And I, I don't know, it was kind of like you pick up where you left off with the Edmonton game. It was just kind of not that good. And 45 shots were given up to Alex Stalock. The Blackhawks around the power play six bleeping times again, again. What? I mean, that's f- freaking awful. That's right. Should I say again? Yeah. I mean, eh, six bleeping times. I mean, and the Wild did get uh, two power plays. They did not convert, and luckily the penalty kill spectacular for the Wild at the end of the day, giving up zero power plays against the Chicago Blackhawks. But who do you think scored in this game? Just take one bleep and guess. Who scored? Who scored for the Blackhawks? Take one bleep and guess. That's right, Patrick Kane. Are you surprised? Well, it was showtime, and and you got to hear the you got to hear Chelsea four times in the game. It's just the most wonderful feeling ever if you're a Wild fan to get to hear Chelsea time and time again. Patrick Kane, I swear, he changes his celebrations every year, and now he's doing like a Michael Jordan type of thing where he does that old pump uh, where he. Uh, clinches his fist like Michael Jordan used to do when he hit game-winning shots for the Chicago Bulls, not the Wizards or anything. Um, Not a whole lot of game-winning shots with the Wizards. Not a whole lot of wins with the Wizards. Uh, But Patrick Kane, two goals in the game. Just, just, they they just kind of gave it to him, it seemed like, on on the second one, especially, like, really? Are are we just going to give this game away? That's what it felt like. Ryan Hartman, who had the hot start to the season, yeah, of course, he finally gets his fifth goal of the year after it took, like, a month and a half, pretty much, since his last goal. Hot start to the season back in October, November. I even sent him on fantasy and cut him when I realized the guy was doing absolutely nothing. Because <laughs> he did absolutely nothing ever since then. Unassisted goal, a disgusting uh, turnover there. And uh, Dumba would ultimately get his sixth goal of the season, his third goal in two games. Matt Dumba, absolutely a nice week. Four goals total during the course of the week. Charlie Coyle, strong, solid, this and that, but there's not a whole lot of positivity you're going to get out of this game. Other than, it's nice to see Jules Eriksson playing better uh, since his call-up. Um, it's nice to see him back with the Wild again, his call-up. He's been strong. He's been better. Uh, and the talk from Bruce Boudreau is that, yeah, Jules Eriksson needs to play the puck more. He needs to play on the puck rather than off the puck. And he has been doing that, and you've seen improvements. Uh, of course, Daniel Winnick has remained at center. He's been on the fourth line, the third line, back and forth center. Uh, and it kind of it's debatable, the Cullen line versus the Winnick line. Who's the third, who's the fourth? But generally, the Cullen line is supposed to be the fourth. Uh, of course, the Winnick line was for a while, but back and forth, this and that. Uh, lately, the Cullen line has just been terrible, I would have to say. Another stupid turnover against Florida. And it was by Matt Cullen himself. Ugh, hard to watch. Tyler Ennis had his nice little uh, resurgence uh, about a week, two weeks ago, and he's back to being Tyler Tyler Ennis the Invisible again. Tyler the Friendly Ghost. Uh, Stewart, well, a bit more active, a bit better. You're seeing a little more action from him, but still not the best. Not He's not been the best, uh, and that's unfortunate as well. Jason Zucker, it's been eternity since he last scored, and that's frustrating. Though he is active uh, physically out there, that's good, but again... Not the kind of guy you want handling the puck in the neutral zone, and when he does, you get the turnovers, and that can lead to the Patrick Kane type of goals. Any type of breakaway for Patrick Kane, he's going to score, and that's kind of all she wrote. Uh, Jared Spurgeon has returned, and that's the good news and all that, but, well, he's not the same. And, yeah, that's what happens when he misses an extended period of time. Uh, the Goose, Gustav Olsen, has seen zero action ever since. He was the James Chapman Memorial winner last week, and I guess Bruce Boudreaux agreed. There's a new one this week, and, yeah, We'll get to him very soon. One of the acquisitions in the summertime who's just a nobody right now. Uh, Nate Prosser's been solid, though he got he got absolutely schooled on a goal in, in Florida, the game tire. Oh, heartbreaking. Uh, Riley and Prosser playing together. Uh, Riley back to the left shot, Prosser to the right where he always yeah, ha- has been. Um, Brodeen's been playing with Jared Spurgeon. I don't think those two guys had had a good week at all, to be quite frank. Uh, Dumba and Studer, solid. Good, obviously, um, obviously the top pairing right now, and they've they've been doing well, and it's nice to see Bruce Boudreaux saying, "Hey, you're staying with Dumba, and you've seen a better hockey player out of Matt Dumba." And quite frankly, Suter's been putting the points on the board just like always. It's not like anything has dropped off out of Ryan Suter. Maybe a little bit. Uh, he has to be a little more focused defensively than before because Dumba, of course, can make mistakes, and he's known to do that very often. But with uh, Suter and Dumba together, I think that's a that's a pretty strong pairing. And Spurgeon right now, he's sh- he's rusty. He's been my favorite player on the team the last three years. 
He's been nothing short of rusty. Uh, he's not the same guy that he was before the injury because, again, you're out about a month, about 10 games, 9 games, and you're not going to get the same production level. Jonas Brodeen, again, did not have a good week, I would have to say. Uh, Riley and Prosser, solid. They're okay. They're doing good for the bottom pairing, and it's nice to see. I, I kind of like those two together right now. Um, one of these days you'll see Susie and Sealer, but not today. <laughs> Corey Crawford was typical. Corey Crawford, no matter what good type of shot on net the Wild would get, uh, sometimes you're just desperate to get a shot on net, but when the Wild would get good chances, like Koivu, again, so many times, Koivu, you think this is it. There it is. And then the magical save by the Corey Crawfords and frickin' Reimer of Florida. Oh, you saw Koivu with that same look in his eye, just the glass eyes, like, you're kidding, I didn't score there. Wow, wow. And that was the case with uh, Corey Crawford throughout the night. And, well, that's typical Corey Crawford versus the Wild. Uh, Patrick Kane and Corey Crawford, the only other, the only name missing in this one is Jonathan Taves. He didn't score, but he dominated, uh, generally speaking. He won in the face-offs. He got shots on net, and he was good and solid. He was good without uh, getting on the board, at least. Duncan Keith uh, registering assist after assist, but, uh, yep, one in this game. But he's been consistently getting assists, and it's helpful for fantasy, and I'm ashamed to say I have Duncan Keith on my roster, but but I do. Uh, 16th assist in this one. I'm sorry. That was a Patrick Kane's second goal. Just a breakaway, an embarrassing, embarrassing situation there. Turnovers in the neutral zone that just get you killed, get you murdered. It happened multiple times in this game, and of course, the power play situation where, well, the puck possession was dominated by the Chicago Blackhawks. Is it obvious? Was it pretty obvious to you? I would say it was. It was obvious in the Edmonton game. Uh, Edmonton and Chicago, well, old meets new, so to speak, I guess. The future dominant team in the Western Conference, or are they? Are they the Minnesota Timberwolves of the NBA? Like, say, when the Timberwolves signed Kevin Garnett to that astronomical contract, and you have a hell of a time really signing anybody else. Uh, yes, there's players there that are good, but you need other players. You need some defensemen. You need to be able to spend money on defensemen, this or that. Uh, helpers in the in the lower, the, the bottom six, and the middle and lower pairing defensemen, and, well, how about a top defenseman to go with Larson, guys like that, but uh, I don't know, Edmonton might end up being like the Timberwolves, well, they'll just be mediocre, they'll have an expensive player that they, they're paying probably too much, and you're stuck, because the uh, NHL salary cap is not going up uh, of late, and a lot of us hoped it would, it's gone up a little bit, but just baby steps, it's moving at a snail's pace, unfortunately. And a lot of us like hockey more than the NBA, at least most of us, until you watch games like Edmonton and Chicago games <laughs> with the Wild. But, um, yeah, stuff like that. You're hoping for a nice TV contract for the NHL, but that day has not come, unfortunately. Uh, the Wild head to Ottawa. This was the fun game of the week. We, we can sit back and enjoy, but, of course, it didn't come without some sloppy play. Uh, the Wild didn't get in the box six times. That's nice. That's an improvement. But both teams ultimately got in four times in this one. Yep, four times in this one. The Wild actually had less penalties than the Florida Panthers, if you can believe that. A 6-4 win for the Wild, so nice. A fun, fun night. <sighs> Feels a little better. 6-4 win. <laughs> but still, again, I mean, it got a little scary. You keep giving up goals. You go down 3-1, to one, for cripe's sake. But then the goal scoring takes over uh, Tuesday, December the 19th. Again, the Wild down... <laughs> one nothing, very early. Eric Carlson scoring very early. Of course, of course, it's going to happen. A guy who's obviously a superstar, one of the best defensemen in the league, if not the best, but he's not been scoring goals, a la Duncan Keith and others. Not been scoring goals. Uh, Brent Burns was the other one. So then Brent Burns gets his, what was it, his second and third goal of the season against the Wild. Sure. So then Eric Carlson gets his second goal of the season against the Wild. Sure. That's how it generally seems to work, doesn't it? Like it or not, and I'm not trying to rip the Wild, and yes, Eric Carlson had his second and third goals against the Wild. He got two goals in the game. He didn't get one. He got two. <laughs> uh, Eric Stallwood had two goals in the game as well, though, and very helpful. Uh, Nate Prosser, first goal of the season, just simply putting the puck on net, and good things happen. Unassisted play there. Jonas Brodin, similar. Eric Stahl would get an assist on that one. A three-point night for Eric Stahl. Wow, Chris Stewart, a kind of a fairly highlight type of play, getting his eighth goal of the season. That was very exciting. An awesome play. Awesome pass by Yule Erickson Eck, who's been pretty much, he's been right up there, like the best skater out there this past week. The best forward, we'll say. The best forward, because the uh, 
Mike Madonna Award is probably going to go to a certain defenseman for the first time in a while, maybe ever. Uh, Prosser actually had two points on the night. Prosser actually registered his second assist of the season on the Chris Stewart goal. Nice to see a bunch of guys there that really needed points. Uh, Hugh Larrison next fourth point of the season. Chris Stewart's eighth goal of the season after that six-goal start for Chris back in November. October, November, nice strong start for him. And, of course, the usual typical drop-off. Uh, Dumba would get his 12th assist of the season. And that was very <laughs> uplifting. Ultimately, a four-goal week for Matt Matthew Dumba during the course of this one as he did get another goal coming up. Uh, very exciting uh, for Dumba to see him really producing. And, of course, Suter factoring in on the assist as well. Um, Gumba really racking up the points this week, and I, I feel good for him. Again, you, you see the gaffes. You see the gaffes here and there, but they're not as bad. And, of course, it helps, again, when you're playing with the best defenseman on the roster overall. Again, a lot of us like Spurgeon that way, but he's not been playing that way, to be quite fair. A fun game. You saw more open play by the Wild. You saw more puck possession by the Wild, and a lot of good things happened. Ottawa, of course, an inferior team. They have one superstar defenseman. Craig Anderson, I don't know. Man, the poor guy, he is not the same. Uh, he faced 40 shots in the game. That didn't help. Again, six of them went past. All of them, of course, no empty netters in this one because it was a, ended up being a three-goal game. Craig Anderson, who I remember very recently, shut out the Wild about a year ago, if I remember correctly, or was it two years ago? The guy's capable of getting shutouts on a fairly regular basis, but this year has not been a good one for Craig Anderson. Ottawa, the, <laughs> the near Eastern Conference champions last year, they went to the conference finals and they're not going to come close to it. Um, they even have Matt Duchesne on the roster, and he hasn't been faring well either, um, unfortunately for the Ottawa Senators. All kinds of talented players, but at the same time, it's just not been going well at all uh, for the Ottawa Senators. No surprise, Mike Hoffman wound up getting two, two assists on the night. He always scores something. He always factors in the scoring somehow, some way against the Wild, and he did once again. <laughs> Gustav Olsson and Zach Mitchell. Um, Scratch and of course Dumnik scratched with injury. Zach Parisi, of course, talked that he will probably return the first week of January. So that's the good part. The bad part is he's probably not going to be the same guy. Uh, six to four victory for the Minnesota Wild Tuesday, December the nineteenth. I apologize if I said a three goal win. No, the Wild were up by three, but ultimately the Ottawa Senators did score the final goal of the game. So good for them, I guess. But Koivu finally ending his drought. It was about. Gosh, two months, I believe, for Miko Cuevo. 20-some games, 23-game drought for Miko Cuevo. Fifth goal of the season, and good for him. Um, he's had a lot of chances, but uh, and things he was setting up chances for other players for quite the longest time, and then he had a really quiet week last week, the past two weeks, really. And then finally, this week, multiple chances, including in the Florida game. Didn't score there, but did score against the Ottawa Senators. So let's move on quickly into Florida. Oh, goody, South Beach. Let's head to South Beach. Of course, it's Dad's it's, uh, dad's week, Dad's weekend, Dad's day, whatever. Time in Florida with a lot of the players' dads. You feel for the guy who scored the opening goal of the game, Ryan Suter, because his dad is no longer with us. Of course, Zach Parisi's father, no longer with us either. So, kind of cool. You could imagine him kind of having a little mental, mental tribute for his father, uh, Ryan Suter there, scoring on the power play, assisted by Matt Dumba and Granlin. Again, Dumba and Suter. See, both of those guys, they're providing points for the other, and that's good. Uh, goals for the other, and they're getting assists for the other. So they're making each other appear more and more and more in the scoring, and that's the exciting part for those two, is you're seeing the numbers go up for Dumba and Suter. So Suter doesn't have a whole lot to complain about, to be quite frank, playing with Dumba. I'm sure defensively, yes, it's frustrating, but, well, Dumba seems to be learning a little bit, and that's the encouraging sign. Um, this game, though, I, I can't believe the Wild didn't win this game. Um, but then again, I, it just, I don't know. When you turn the puck over and, you know, make dumb plays like that, it's heartbreaking. Uh, Felino picked up a dumb penalty right out of the gate, one minute into the game. Just a dumbass penalty by Felino. And it's like the same old story, Marcus Felino. That's why he got scratched a lot the past week or so. But then again, this week, he was in there every game because it's like, okay, we're paying this guy about $3 million a year. And, well, he's not even close to reaching what a $3 million a year player should give you. Should be a little better than this. Uh, you're seeing a whole lot of nothing from Felino forever. Uh, Yul Eriksson Eck was strong in the Ottawa game, strong in the Florida game. It was nice to see him out there doing, you know, getting, again, 
playing the puck, playing on the puck more. He got more and more minutes in this game, almost 18 minutes for Yul Eriksson-Eck, right there with Eric Stahl, only a couple seconds less than Eric Stahl, about a half a shift less. Pretty cool. A coil factor here and there. He got called for a tough penalty along the way as well. He drew the ire of uh, Bruce Boudreaux towards the officials. After the game, the Boudreaux I irate a bit. You could sense it. <laughs> you could definitely sense it. It was a very short uh, press conference or, or media gathering, whatever, around uh, Bruce Boudreaux. Very, very short. Uh, overall, again, I mean, Matt Cullen turning the puck over and just giving it away. Just a terrible play. Um, and Jonathan Huber, Huberdo, uh, definitely a rising star with Ottawa, putting on a couple of awesome plays. And then again, a, a highlight goal against Nate Prosser. Literally froze the guy, kind of like in the NBA, it would be like crossing a guy up. A amazing goal by Huberdo and a heartbreaker. Uh, he scored his 10th and 11th goal of the, of the season. The final one was on the on the uh, the uh, the, uh, the empty net. The Huberdo goal ultimately tied the game up. That was after Daniel Winnick. And midway through the second period, created a nice turnover. Literally just stripped the puck away and made a great move to the net. I mean, occasionally the guy looks like a legit scorer in this league. And gosh, only his third goal. It's like, yeah, he is a bottom six guy. And he's more of a defensive player. But hey, good solid play. Just awesome taking the puck away. Unassisted third goal of the season. Uh, Kushek, Kushek with his 14th goal of the season for Ottawa. Uh, the Wilds' first power play, or second power play in the past couple nights, this one by Ryan Suter again earlier to open up the scoring. Fairly early in the game, you were hopeful, and then again, things went downhill. Hubadro with that spectacular move around Nate Prosser. Kind of heartbreaking, made Prosser look pretty bad there, froze him in place, and then just went right around him. An unbelievable goal by Hubadro, flipping it a wrister past uh, Staylock. Connor Brinkley goal was the one that was embarrassing. Matt Cullen getting the puck for the Wild, just kind of sliding it nonchalantly away from Staylock right to Connor Brinkley, and Brinkley ended up putting it in. Keith Yaddle with the assist on that one, and of course Huberdro with the empty netter, and it's just, you're just stunned, like, did this really just happen? I mean, the the, the Huberdro goal early in that second period, heartbreaking. Like, ah, oh, but well, it's tied, we're not losing, we'll be fine, but then again, there, and there was the Brinkley goal, which pretty much set things in motion. Ten minutes remaining, we're tied, and we end up losing the game on the road, and Bruce Brudeau definitely <laughs> voicing his frustration about such a uh, situation there for uh, for his fourth line there. Uh, just extremely upset. He said, "I was just it was just dumb, and that's what it was. And you expect a veteran to make a smart play there, and he did not. Uh, Cullen has been very disappointing, I would have to say, as a whole for this season couple of positive moments here and there. He was starting to factor a little teeny bit in the in the scoring, and then next thing you know, down, 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 things go. Uh, the Wild got five power plays in this one, which is nice, and, and gave up three in the game, but of course one right out of the gate, which again, that doesn't help your team in the early going. Luckily, the Wild did not suffer in that situation, and they did score one out of their five, so that's helpful, and they stopped all of uh, Florida's power play chances, but still, again, Again, not a good momentum setter, getting a penalty about a minute and 15 seconds into the game by Marcus Foligno. So you could probably guess where the awards are going to go this week. Uh, Matt Dumba will be getting the Mike Madonna Award for the week, even though he had a bad <laughs> a bad play, bad couple plays in, against Dan, uh, Denver, against the uh, Edmonton Oilers. And of course, you know, you're always going to get the gaffes here and there. Uh, Stalock stood on his head throughout the week. You feel for the guy. Uh, yet he gave up about three and a half goals a game because he was facing so much adversity the whole week. And he was just getting, you know, he was getting peppered time and time again. As of course the wild puck possession situation not been good. Stalock can't get the <laughs> can't get the Mike Madonna of the week award, but again, very deserving of recognition for again, despite having poor statistics in terms of goals against average. Well, it's kind of hard when the other team has the puck the whole game, and he has to face odd man rushes time and time again. He, he makes a lot of saves that Dubnik doesn't make, which is an interesting thought, <laughs> literally an interesting thought when we talk about the goalie situation for the Minnesota Wild, because on most breakaways, Dubnik doesn't stop it. And when he does stop it, he's spectacular. That's when he's having those you know, those like month-long stretches of like 1.5 goals again, stuff like that, when Dubnik is capable of that on occasion. Whereas Stalock stops a lot of those breakaways more consistently. Uh, when Dubnik doesn't stop breakaways, he gets crushed time and time again, and he has those four-goal type of games. Um, 
And it's well, even when the other team, whoever they are, has only 24 shots on goal. That's when you get a, the, the Civ version of Dubnik, which we've seen often this season, unfortunately. Other than that three-game three game shutout streak, which was pretty amazing, to say the least. So, frustrating week for the Wild. The James Tripper Memorial absolutely is going to Marcus Foligno. He is a $3 million piece of crap right now when it comes to the Minnesota Wild. $3 million a year piece of crap for the Minnesota Wild. God bless him. Good guy, tough guy who could probably pound me into a submission, pound me to a, beat me to a bloody pulp if he wanted to, but I got to give it to you, brother. I mean, let's see a little bit better. Uh, they've been demanding better from him. You see moments here and there, but they last for seconds, not minutes, seconds, and it's like, come on. So, Marcus Foligno, I'm sorry, a big, juicy, steaming pile of you-know-what James Shepard Award for you for this past week. Let's take a break. We're going to preview three games as we head into Christmas. That's right, Christmas. Not the holiday weekend, the Christmas weekend. We can call it Christmas weekend, can't we? Because the 25th is Christmas. So let's just call it what it is. We don't. <laughs> let's just call it what it is. We'll preview those games. Check a bit on Iowa and other prospects in the system. Of course, college uh, inactive this past week. It is Christmas slash winter slash holiday break. There you go. Happy now. <laughs> for a lot of the colleges out there. So we'll be back for segment number two right after this. Segment number two, we're going to preview three games. Florida, Dallas, Nashville, and then, well, they we're going to do a back-to-back with Nashville, but we'll save that for next week. A home and away with Nashville. Doesn't get any easier, does it? Easy schedule, you know, we'll be just fine. We'll be fine. It's going to be easy, you know. We, we only lost three out of the last four, and now we get to play the best team in hockey. And Dallas has always kind of been a thorn in our side, and Nashville's is pretty freaking good right now in the Western Conference. They are the Western Conference champions, defending, by the way, and the odds of them defending it are pretty good. Uh, Dallas has Ben Bishop now, and he's, uh, yeah, we'll talk about him in a minute. Let's talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, this could be the year, finally, for the Tampa Bay Lightning, as they've come close many, many times. Um, is it time for the Tampa Bay Lightning to win the Stanley Cup? Is it time for them to win the Eastern Conference? Yeah, I think it's time for the Tampa Bay Lightning to win the Eastern Conference at a bare minimum. Um, the Penguins are always a threat. They still will be. Maybe it'll be Tampa and Pittsburgh in the West Finals. Maybe Tor- Tampa and Toronto, the uh, division rival for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Very possible. Very possible. We'll just let that kind of happen when it does happen, I guess. Uh, Tampa Bay is nine points or nine points ahead of Toronto. I almost said behind. Toronto is the one that's behind, but they're still very strong. Austin Matthews missed a few games, but uh, nice trade by the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. We're going to play both of the goalies that they had last year. Andre Vasilevsky has been awesome. Yeah, he's been unbelievable, and he was a great replacement when Ben Bishop was injured last year. Ultimately, the Lightning, when Bishop comes back, they're so impressed with Andre Vasilevsky that they trade him to the Los Angeles Kings in a situation, of course, where Peter Budaj had filled in pretty nicely for the Los Angeles Kings and Jonathan Quickstead. They get Ben Bishop to the Kings, but it's too little too late. The Kings miss the playoffs. Andre Vesilovski keeps the, uh, I'm sorry, keeps the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning competitive, and he was awesome, and look at him now, look at him now. Three shutouts on the year, 2.2 goals against average. Ben Bishop's on the Dallas Stars. Interesting, as he did not stay with the Kings. Peter Bodas remains with the Tampa Bay Lightning, and he's been below average, yet still 3-2 and two because the team in front of him is a scoring machine. Uh, Peter Budaj has been very, actually not that great. Only six games started so far, and his goals against average is yuck. It's pretty bad. Uh, about four goals a game allowed by, by Peter Budaj, who'd been, you know, he'd had some moments last year for the Los Angeles Kings. Easily his best season, so unfortunately for him, kind of stuck. Uh, most recently, the Tempe Lightning went to a shootout with Ottawa, and I, yeah, I saw that, and was like, huh, well, Ottawa lost that game. Tampa Bay still won. Kucherov. Kucherov. Nikita Kucherov has been unbelievable. Steven Stamkos has actually been healthy. That's nice. That helps a lot. And he's got 45 points. Uh, Tyler Johnson, Minnesota Connections there. 24 points for Tyler Johnson along the way. Uh, one player after another. Name Skitanov. 
Uh, Vladis Lav Nemskitanov has been pretty damn good as well. He's the fourth leading scorer with 30 points, 15 goals in the season. But Kucherov has definitely been the story. As great as Steven Stamkos is, remember when he just kind of disappeared in the Stanley Cup Finals years ago, or, or Conference Finals, pardon me, a couple of years back. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the Finals, in the Finals against the Blackhawks. I'm going crazy. Uh, they lost in the Conference Finals, I remember, to Boston back in 2011. And they lost recently, very recently, to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, two years ago, that's what it was. Uh, I'm getting, I'm going crazy. Tampa Bay Lightning have had some nice runs. Of course, last year, of course, disappointing with the injuries and such to the goaltender. And yeah, Steven Samkos missed most of the year last year. He was very disappointing, um, but uh, certainly been solid for the Tampa Bay Lightning this year. 45 points. I mean, he's got 11 more points than games played. So multiple guys. They're headed towards 90 to 100 point seasons with the. Tampa Bay Lightning, and two other guys, Braden Point and Namskidanov. I love that name. That's an interesting one. Stick Sticknov, pardon me. Uh, they're on pace for about 80 points, 79 points on the season. Wow. Yeah, Wild will have their hands full. What's really impressive, though, is out of the last five games. Okay, here we go. Tampa Bay beat St. Louis 3-0. That's extremely good. They beat Arizona 4-1. Meh. They gave up five goals, yet still score six and beat Colorado on the road. Meh. They lost to the Vegas Golden Knights. Have I mentioned that I think the Golden Knights are going to make the playoffs? I think the Golden Knights are going to make the playoffs. I really do. I mean, this this team is not going away. I mean, they are freaking good. The wild win over the Vegas Golden Knights is a lot more impressive than people want to give credit. That is a good hockey team. That is a damn good hockey team. Uh, Fleury is back. Marc-Andre Fleury again, uh, the younger brother of P.K. Supan, who will be playing again this week with Nashville. Oh, goody. Uh, Malcolm Supan did a good job for the most part. Didn't have the best game against the Wild, I would have to say. But, damn. Uh, wow, they lost to Vegas. And Vegas just continues to do well. Okay, let's get back to the Lightning. Um, the chances of the Wild winning this game, back-to-back, after playing the Florida Panthers just last night, no, I don't think the Wild are going to win the game. It would be extremely impressive if the Wild do pull off a split here. A lot of people were hoping for a split between these two, but they were thinking last night was the win, not Tampa Bay. If the Wild win in Tampa Bay, I mean, good. That's a good win. Of course, one it's only one win, and it's only worth two points. But mentally, it's got to be helpful. The Lightning have lost only seven games in regulation this year and two in the uh, shootout slash overtime situation. The Wild have three of those overtime shootout losses on the season, and the Wild have been awesome in overtime and shootouts. So hopefully Minnesota can somehow escape this one with a tie, escape the first three periods with a tie, and then take our chances with Darkwing Dumba, the uh, Mike Madonna Award winner of this week, to win the game. Uh, even Chris Kunitz, the former Pittsburgh Penguin, is on the... Uh, the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. He's not quite having the success there, but oh well. Um, yeah, he's doing he's doing all right. Tyler Johnson though has you know, he's filled in nicely. He's filling in a good role there for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Second, third line player there again. 23, 24 points on the season. The Wild could use a guy like that right now on the roster. He'd be one of the top scorers on the Wild, which is kind of sad. Wild will not win the game. I'm picking a four to two loss for Minnesota in Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa Bay Lightning are the soon-to-be Stanley Cup champions if things continue the way they're going. I mean, they've only lost seven games this season. Impressive. Impressive. It's almost New Year's, and that's that's how good they've been doing. Uh, Steven Stamkos needs to show up this time, though, for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, but at least they have Nikita Kucherov now <laughs> to help to help the Lightning ultimately win the Cup, which is, again, I, it's not a guarantee. Obviously, teams have their great seasons, and then here come the playoffs, and down they go, but... This isn't the Washington Capitals who choke every year in the playoffs. This team has had playoff success, even when they've been an underdog. So watch out for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm very impressed. And, of course, uh, with Steve Eiserman leading the way down there in the gen- in the, uh, in the the uh, as, as the general manager of the front office and all that, he's done a hell of a job. And uh, good on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, Dallas Stars, well, they're a winning team. They're a playoff team, 19-14-3 on the season. Ben Bishop, woo, don't you love Ben Bishop? Uh, The Minnesota Wild will be playing the Dallas Stars on December the 27th. That would be a Wednesday, of course. (laughs) Quite a long break here as you head into Christmas time. So, nice couple days off to refocus after probably not beating the Tampa Bay Lightning. I hope the Wild do. Ben Bishop is one of those guys, he's kind of like Dubnik, I guess you could say. He's got three shutouts in the year, goals against average, 
uh, over two and a half, two point six five. He's kind of having a Dubnik like a year where when he's hot, he's hot, and when he's not, he's not. Uh, Kerry Lennon is a below average goalie, and he's now the backup for Ben Bishop. But he's filled in. He's been he's been he's he's been in there thirteen games. He started ten of them. Ben Bishop has been pulled a couple times this season. Uh, again, three shutouts though, but save percentage only ninety one percent. Kerry Lennon worse, of course. Goals against average, right about identical, but the save percentage slightly worse and no shutouts on the year. Of course, you got the two stars, Jamie Ben, Tyler Stegen, both of them, well, playing back to their 80-plus point type of level uh, for the most part. 80 points, 78 points. They're not having spectacular years, but they're good. Uh, Tyler Pitlick, of course, the son of Lance Pitlick, former Gopher and, of course, Ottawa Senator and others over, over the many years in the past. Uh, Lance Pitlick, nice career in the NHL. Minnesota Ties, of course. I'm even friends with him on Facebook, but he's like, who the hell are you, I'm sure. <laughs> but why not? Uh, John Klingberg, obviously one of the valuable defensemen in the NHL. The top guy for, he's the, obviously the Ryan Suter for the Dallas Stars. 25 assists on the season. Dallas is back to being a playoff team, but they're mediocre. They're beatable. It's a home game for the Wild. So if you're going to pick a win out of these games, it's got to be this one. I mean, the Wild can be Dallas. It's not in Dallas. It seems like the Wild almost never win there, except lately. Ben Bishop is beatable. Um, Dallas is frustrating. They're dangerous. They had their number on the Wild time and time again. But Dallas is weird. They're up and down, and just like the Wild. But I do believe the Wild can beat this team. I think the Wild will get a positive victory. Uh, post-Christmas type of game here. There will be no hangover from anything, I don't think. I think the Stars are more likely to have any type of a like, quote-unquote hangover, you know, being on, being on the road and such. It's not easy, and it's not a freaking matinee game. I don't want any matinee games. Dallas recently had a three-game losing streak to New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Washington. Those East Coast trips are not easy, boy. Uh, New York Islanders, they did crush them 5-2, to two, and they shut out the uh, Chicago Blackhawks most recently. That's an impressive win. Ben Bishop getting his third shutout of the season there. But before that, not the best run. Um, I don't know, Philadelphia was a low-scoring game, but generally speaking, giving up a pretty good amount of goals to the New Jerseys and the Washingtons of, of like. Uh, overall, Ben Bishop strong, though, most recently. A winnable game for the Wild. Uh, most likely guy to score against the Tampa Bay Lightning. i got to backtrack here. It's not going to be Nino Niederreiter, obviously, because he was injured early in the game. And, well, you know how they are. They don't really talk about injuries very much. And they're not sure what the status is. It's kind of a day-to-day thing from what I know so far for Nino Niederreiter. He will not likely be on the roster right now. Zach Mitchell will play on one of the bottom lines. Well, who knows? I mean, Zach Mitchell floats all over. He could be on any line at this point with the way Bruce Boudreaux changes things around. Um, you even saw the Granlund, uh, Zucker, and Koivu line back together again last night, and it didn't, they didn't get anywhere. They had, a, they had some chances, but generally speaking, not what you saw last year, where it was just the most beautiful thing ever for the first half of the season or so. Um, most likely got a score against uh, Tampa Bay. Okay, let's go with... Eric Stahl is going to score against Tampa Bay, uh, against the Dallas Stars. I would have said Eric Halla because he always scored against the Dallas Stars, but Eric Halla is in the Vegas Golden Knights now, and he's having an awesome season for the Vegas Golden Knights. Man, <laughs> he's like a second-line center over there, and he's looking like it. He's doing a hell of a job. Man, oh, Eric Halla. We could really use him right now, couldn't we? Even though uh, Hugh Erickson is playing better, he's kind of taken on the Eric Halla role of late, and he's a bigger guy, and he's highly uh, more high more highly touted, uh, generally speaking, of course, and he should be when he's a first-round pick. Eric Hall was a seventh-round pick, so, yeah, quite the survivor there uh, early on, and he ultimately ended up being a good hockey player. Uh, now for the Knights, and of course for the, the Wild for, for a good a good amount of time until they decided to let him go. Dumba finally starting to live up to some of the reason why the Wild kept him from the Knights, Vegas Golden Knights, that is. Let's get to the point here. Dallas Stars most likely guy to score against the Dallas Stars. Oh, boy. Mm. I'm gonna. Th- I'm hoping for Charlie Coyle to get going again. He needs to score another goal. He's been a factor of late. How about Yul Eriksson Ek? Yeah, Yul Eriksson Ek getting his first goal since coming back uh, to the Minnesota Wild. He's been registering assists. He's been playing well, but I believe his hard work will get will, will pay off, and he will be the guy to score against the Dallas Stars. So there you go. A Minnesota Wild victory 
over the Dallas Stars, 3-2 to two type of game, maybe 4-2 to two with the empty net, that type of situation, and pray to God you don't have to go to it, sure enough, because you do not want to give a point to the Dallas Stars, and you sure as bleep do not want to lose to the Dallas Stars at home. This is a game the Wild need to win, and the Wild will win the game, just like they did against the Calgary Flames not too long ago. I believe the Wild will be victorious against the Dallas Stars, 3-2 to two or a 4-2 to two victory with an empty netter. Yul Eriksson will score his first goal in since the season opener. <laughs> Pekka Rinne and the Nashville Predators on Friday. Yes, coming up. Friday the 29th and, of course, Saturday the 30th in <laughs> Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee. Will the Wild pull off a, sw- uh, a split here? I hope so. Um, Wild more likely to win at home than on the road. i got to think against Nashville. The Wild did have some success against the Nashville Predators, though, on the road. Kyle Turris, since the trade, has been pretty solid. 17 points on, in 19 games. He's been a nice, solid center for the top six, of course, top six type of guy, top two center for the National Predators, trying to win the Western Conference again. All kinds of talent on this roster, from Arvidsson to P.K. Supan, who's got 24 points, uh, Kevin Fiala, <laughs> and, of course, Philip Forsberg was the overall star of the team. No more James Neal, a big, big, tough loss for the Nashville Predators, just like the Wild lost Eric Halla and Alex Tuck. An expensive trade-off for not losing uh, Mr. Matt Dumba. I don't know. Was Matt Dumba worth giving up Eric Halla and Alex Tuck? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Scott Hartnell is still playing. Wow, Scott Hartnell. I cannot believe that guy's still in the NHL. He is on the Nashville Predators. Seven points in 21 games. Kind of just playing a Matt Cullen type of a role for <laughs> the Nashville Predators. Obviously one of the oldest guys out there. Uh, Pekka Rinne has had a decent season. He's, he's up and down a bit, but generally speaking, 18-6 and six on the year. I mean, you can't argue with the win-loss record. Save percentage has been excellent. He's faced a lot of shots, so about 92%, and then three shutouts on the year for him. Yusef Saros recently shut out the Blackhawks as well. 2.62, the goalie, backup goalie for the National Predators. We'll see him in one of the two games. Will we see Saros in Nashville, or will we see Saros in Minnesota? I think we're going to see Rene in Minnesota, Saros on the road, but if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, will Alex Stalek play in the back-to-back? I kind of think somebody needs a break here. I think Alex Stalek should get a night off, unless Devin Dubnik actually is ready to return. And the possibility does exist that Devin Dubnik will be returning fairly soon. Um, we'll see. We'll see, though. Uh, you might see uh, Stephen Michalik finally get an NHL start and hope for the best there. As he did well in the AHL. He did terrible in the ECHL. I don't know if it was some kind of a mental thing where he's like, bleep this, I don't want to be here. I'm, an, I'm at least an AHL goalie. I thought I was good enough to be an NHL backup by now. I'm getting tired of being stuck in the minor leagues. I don't know. But uh, I would like to see Stephen Michael get a debut for the Minnesota Wild. I think he should. A six-round pick in 2011. Stephen Michael, who's done pretty well in the AHL the last couple of years. Let's be honest. Let's be fair. It would be kind of funny. Alex Stalek and Stephen Michael, just like last year in the... Uh, the uh, Iowa Wild. Kind of funny to think about. Uh, Nashville recently had a three-game winning streak over Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, and then they lost 6-4 to Winnipeg. Ouch. 4-1 to one to Carolina at home, though. Ooh. So, I don't know. Nashville uh, struggling a little bit. They'll play Dallas and St. Louis before the Wild. Very important games for the Nashville Predators if they want to win the uh, conference again. Obviously, if they want to have a nice seed in the postseason, they will make the playoffs. I'd be stunned if the Nashville Predators do not make the playoffs. 46 points on the season. Tied with Winnipeg and St. Louis, a complete logjam. Dallas breathing down their necks, kind of. Five points behind. <sighs> Minnesota, seven points behind the National Predators. Oh, boy. Every team in this division has a winning record. Even Colorado's starting to get better again. They're starting to kind of shake off some of that that uh, swoon there. That, De- that November, December swoon that they've been going through. Picking it up again are the Colorado Avalanche, and good on them, I suppose. If the Wild are going to win one of these two, I'm going to pick the home game. Uh, the Wild have ha- have been good at home for the most part, except the freaking Edmonton game recently. That was horrible. I like the Wild's chances at home against Nashville, and then you take your chances on the road. Stephen Michael, like possibly on the road in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to pick a victory for the Wild, believe it or not. I think it's going to go to some kind of a shootout or something. I think the Wild will give up a point to the Nashville Predators, but will escape with the win. Um... 3-2 to two type of game, I believe. 2-2 two to two maybe. Maybe it'll be 3-3 three to three going into the overtime period. I'm going to pick 3-3. Three to three. Pekka Rinne is beatable, as good as he is. Sometimes he's crazy good, and then sometimes he's just extremely beatable. That's kind of like Dubnik again, you could kind of say. Um, 
I'm going to pick something like 4-3 to three with the shootout victory. Shootout slash overtime victory. Maybe Darkwing Dumba will be the victory. I'm going to pick Matt Dumba to be the most likely guy to score with the possibility this could be an overtime type of game where Matt Dumba will be the hero once again and the Wild beat the National Predators but will give up a point to the Predators in the process. But the Wild will get two points. And then the chances of the Wild winning in Nashville the following night slim. But who knows? Maybe you pull off the miracle and you get a double-double back-to-back. You get a back-to-back uh, sweep over the Predators. That'd be quite impressive if the Wild pull that off. Stranger things have happened. Um, an excellent team is Nashville. Ryan Johansson, who's kind of ever mercurial all over the place. Uh, Roman Josie, obviously, guy, one player after another who's just a stud. For the Predators, love Roman Josie. And, of course, P.K. Subban has got the personality that the NHL needs. So, good. Good for him and good for the Nashville Predators, the Western Conference champions, who maybe you'll see Tampa and, and Nashville in the Stanley Cup Finals. That would not surprise me, and it would be an intriguing matchup. A couple teams that have been uh, expansion clubs within the last 15, 20 years or so. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, it's been longer than that now. Nashville started, and, yeah, it's been 20 years. Gosh, it's a long time. Wow. Uh, I believe it was 97, 98, huh? And then Atlanta, 99, and Minnesota and Columbus, 2000. Damn. And then Tampa started, what, 93? So, yeah, yeah, it's a long time ago. <laughs> so, but still, expansion teams the last 20-ish years or so. Teams that you didn't talk about very often back in the in the late 80s, early 90s, at, or, or at all in Nashville's case. So, yeah, you might see that happen. <laughs> Let's wrap up the uh, previous segment. I have the Wild going 2-1, and one, believe it or not. That's hopeful. I'd like to see it happen. I think the Wild can beat... Uh, I think they can squeak out one game against Nashville, and I, the Wild need to beat the Dallas Stars. I, come on. Dallas is better than last year, but I still feel they're beatable, and I think the Wild can and will beat the Dallas Stars coming up. So that's kind of my, my take on things going into these upcoming games. Uh, I'm going to very briefly look at... The upcoming schedules of these clubs as well, if humanly possible. This is the uh, series. This is the series opener. Believe it or not, Minnesota has not played Dallas all season. Uh, the, the next game will be February the third in Dallas, and then in Minnesota, March the 29th and the 31st. So just a couple games later in Dallas to wrap up that season series. That's kind of a cool back-to-back situation there. Oh. And it's obviously very important four-game series against a major division rival there. Tampa Bay, uh, I almost don't, I mean, it's just a two, it's just a two game thing, but I, I like to look at these type of deals if humanly possible as Minnesota and Tampa will next play on uh, January the 20th. So again, that's nice to know. And the Nashville series, of course, it seems like, you know, there's a lot of firsts. You finally get around to the next game. It takes like forever to get there, but eventually you do get there and that's the good part, I suppose, <laughs> coming up. Uh, but before that, as this thing is driving me crazy, let's look a little bit at the Iowa Wild coming up. Uh, Sam Anas has just been awesome the past couple weeks, and now he's gone from a guy who was maybe fourth, fifth, sixth on the team in scoring. He is now officially, sole possession, the leading scorer for the Iowa Wild. 23 points on the season. He has had multiple point games. Time and time again, he scored his 11th goal. Last night was his first uh, single point night, but it was a goal, 11th goal of the season to lead the team. Sam Anas. It's nice to see this guy emerge, and a guy who's been oft injured time and time again from Pontiac, Maryland, a Quinnipiac uh, scoring machine. Uh, good for him. You know, really nice to see. 23 points. Pat Canone with 22. And then Justin Kloos, the other guy who's had multi-point game after multi-point game. The former Gopher captain. I talk about him all the time. Strangely, he's a minus 10, which is really disappointing. I can't believe he's a minus 10. Sam Manas is a plus 3. Wow. So Sam Manas absolutely would be the Mike Badano award winner for the Iowa Wild this past week and the past couple weeks. He's been freaking awesome. Uh, Luke Cunnan has picked up a couple points recently. Nine points in Iowa, so good for him getting a first first goal in Iowa, not that long ago. Good for him to pick up and ca- catch up a little bit down there in Iowa. Finally, starting to regain a little bit of that scoring uh, uh, ability. Ryan Murphy's first point since going back down to Iowa. Really sad to see Ryan Murphy get sent down to Iowa again, but that's just the situation right now. And Jared Spurgeon got called up. Ryan Murphy sent down. 
That sucks, and you feel bad. But Ryan Murphy filled in nicely for the Minnesota Wild. I didn't even talk about it in the earlier segment, but oh well. Now's the time to talk about it because we're talking about the guys there. Uh, Brennan Mennel at 12 points, the young guy. Another point this past week. He's been, he's you know, he, he's fairly quiet, but uh, of late as he had that strong, strong start to the season. But still, overall, he's been quite the story for the Iowa Wild at age 20. The youngest guy on the team. Again, undrafted, of course. Uh, Yul Eriksson Eck was the other youngest guy, but, of course, a first-round pick. Chase Lang is also a young guy, and he, he's a draft pick as well. But he spent most of his time, unfortunately for him, down in the ECHL. As Yeah, the Rapid City Rush have not been good. Uh, Iowa Wild were terrible two years ago. They look a lot better right now. and Good on them. They'd be in the postseason. They have a winning record and all that. And that's nice to see. Nice to see, indeed. Uh, Brennan, Mer- Brennan Menel, of course, a guy I'm very excited about. 12 points on the season. A Jared Spurgeon type of guy, 5'11", 172, 12 points in 30 games for the Iowa Wild. Ryan Murphy kind of playing kind of a Ryan Suter type of role down there, you could say. He's he's definitely the most prolific scoring defenseman. Mostly assists, though, for the Iowa Wild. Only one goal in the year. Justin Clouse and Samanas have been a wonderful story, and they're one of the reasons why the club is playing so well. Luke Cunning's helpful as well, but again, Certainly not putting up the numbers that those guys are. Uh, Nashville Predators, well, this was the uh, the Wild did win earlier this season, a 6-4 win as they peppered Pekka Rinne pretty nicely on November the 16th. I remember that game fairly well. That was a fun night. Nashville was not playing so hot at the time. Minnesota Nashville actually fairly close in the standings at that moment. Um, four games remain, of course, Friday the 29th of December, and then Saturday the 30th, that's the back-to-back, and then you get March the 24th and March the 27th. The 24th is in Minnesota, the 27th is in Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, I keep using the accent. Apologize for that if it's annoying anybody. Not trying to. Uh, Ivan Ladania, Ladnia, pardon me, Ladania, Ladnia had a three-assist game the past week. Uh, right now the OHL is on Christmas break. Ladnia has been very, very strong. 23 assists on the season, 39 points, 16 goals in 34 games for the Erie Otters. Really been happy with the production level for the third-round pick for the Wild this past year. Uh, Dmitry Sokolov watch. We always like to check up on him. Again, the OHL has been quiet the past couple days. 34 points in 32 games, 18 of those goals for Sokolov so far. Again, Jordan Greenway got a hat trick of... Uh, about a week or two weeks ago already. That was pretty exciting. Nice to see Jordan Greenway getting caught up down there yeah, for a fairly slow start for Boston University. Um, other than that, pretty much guys like Luis Belpedio averaging about a point a game as a defenseman for the Miami Red Hawks. Again, though, but of course not uh, <laughs> not, play, not playing right now. They're on their break. Of course, college and, and the uh, OHL both on break because that's a lot of youngsters for those clubs. Nice to see uh, Pavel Genes play a little better. He's, he's, he's picked up a couple points this past week for the, the not-so-good uh, Rapid City Rush. They're really struggling in the ECHL right now. Uh, 14 points, 8 of them goals in 24 games for Pavel Genes, who's been okay. Uh, Dante Salaturo, the guy the Wild got for Jordan Schrader in the offseason. He's the leading scorer, so he's a good ECHL player. I'm not sure really if that's all too exciting. Pavel Genius is, you know, he's part of the mix there. He's about a second, he's pretty much a second slash third line type of guy in the EC, in the ECHL. Not dominating, but at least a factor. At least making somewhat of a name of himself. Uh, Dylan, Dylan Labe, that's again something to think about. A guy who was actually taken ahead of Carson Soucy in the same draft. He's all the way down in the ECHL with less points than Carson Soucy in the, <laughs> in the AHL. So that is another thing to sit down and think about a little bit. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, Chase Lang has been an oft-injured player, unfortunately, for the Wild. He is a right winger, and he's not been producing. And when he you know, when he is healthy, only two points in 18 games. Not so good. Oft-injured, sixth-round pick in the 2014 draft. Not off to a good professional start is the young man, Chase Lang. But still, he's got time, luckily for him. <laughs> Boy, I, I, you, you feel for him. He's struggled down there. So... Points made, I believe it's time to move on and call it a day when it comes to prospect talk and all that. I um, want to thank you guys for listening. I will give out the uh, Twitter account and everything. want to thank Hockey Podcast for retweeting the show. Vince Germano also for retweeting the show. At Brave the Wild. At Brave the Wild is the Twitter account. Thank you again, Vince Germano and Hockey Podcast for retweeting the show. I really appreciate that when I tweet out the newest show is out, this and, this and that. 
Uh, appreciate it very much. Facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild. Facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild. Do like and follow that. And thank you guys that have joined that page and joined in the conversation. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. It's always fun to hear from you. Shout out to Minnesota Wild Hardcore. Love that page. Lots of in-common conversation. Jim Maddell, Sarah Maddell, Chad Wolski, and others. Of course, Chance Kostick. And... <laughs> Of course, David Kostick. Uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, family, family there. Love those guys. Yeah, love they love the wild. They travel with the wild frequently, and boy, uh, it's it's fun to fun fun to keep up with that page and the, the patches they give out and all that. And of course, uh, MNW players, Facebook.com forward slash MNW players. That page has been kind of it's been dormant for a while. Uh, Pavel Bonnet and Merrick Skyba. It's been dormant for the time being. Pavel Bonnet started a what he calls a dream job. So very happy for Pavel over there in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, really appreciate what uh, he's been able to accomplish. Really happy for him. That page will come back next year. He said uh, in next season the page will be back rolling again. But I will continue to give a shout out to those of you that have been joining it. Thank you. Please don't leave. Things will activate again very soon. <laughs> like we cover. Uh, what's really exciting about it, uh, MNW players do go to their actual website, though. Uh, they cover every player related to the Minnesota Wild, from again Zach Parisi, Ryan Suter, all the way down to Pavel Jennings, uh, Dylan Labe. You know, guys in the ECHL, guys in the WHL, guys in the Euro Leagues, and all that. The KHL, of course, Kirill Kaprizov, a, a player everybody's excited about and would love to see suit up for the Minnesota Wild. It would be not be with Iowa. It would not be with... It sure as hell would not be in the ECH. I'd probably get 100 points in 20 games. <laughs> he probably would. It would be something insane like that. Unless he'd be so frustrated he wouldn't play well at all, which is what happened to Steven Michalek, which is kind of weird at the start of the season. They call up Adam Bay, and he was terrible in the AHL and much better in the ECHL. So some guys just belong where they are sometimes. Um, hope to see Steven Michalek play this week. That would be kind of cool. It'd be nice to see him get an NHL debut. He suited up for the Wild, but has not gotten any action of yet. Uh, he suited up in a game last year. Again, no action from Stephen Michalik, unfortunately for him. So, Facebook pages, M MNW players, Brave the Wild. All this information will be in the show description. The final thing to talk about, or a couple things here, are the phone line, 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention you're calling in for Brave the Wild. Do your statement, shout out, comment, question, and opine. Please enjoy. Talk about the wild. Keep it related to the wild, of course. There's a three minute limit on the voicemail because it is a real voicemail. And then, of course, it comes to me and I put it in the show. There's the call now button on the Facebook page, which goes to the same number through Facebook Messenger. So it's free, completely free. So don't worry about long distance, regardless of where you're from. Uh, also, the final route is the audio submission route, which is where you reuse your free recording application on your on your, <laughs> on your smartphone or whatever, smart device, whatever it is. Record it. There is no time limit. Email it to PaladinoLive at Yahoo.com. PaladinoLive at Yahoo.com. Again, the email will be in the show description if you want to copy and paste or whatever you want to do. Uh, there's one other way to do this, of course, Audacity on your laptop or desktop, whatever it is, you can record it that way as well and email it to PaladinoLive at Yahoo.com. Uh, anything that isn't an MP3 file, I can very quickly convert it into an MP3 file thanks to Zumzar.com. So, there it is. A free plug for Zumzar.com because it, that website helps me greatly when people do call in or send audio submissions to the show. Thank you again. Please tell your friends about this show if you could. Please write a positive rating on iTunes also, if you could, or at least just put in a positive rating, whatever it is, five stars or four stars, if you do like this show and want to help out. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thanks again in advance for that. I appreciate everything you guys do for the show. Those of you that tell your friends, I appreciate it oh so very much. I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Of course, the, the New Year's will come before, will come after the next show, so I could wish you a Happy New Year on the next show as well. Uh, Merry Christmas for those of you that do celebrate it, me and myself included, and those of you that don't, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa in those cases. Thanks again for listening. And we will talk to you next week.